there everybody, it's Helping Hands here, finally bringing you this British bootcamp video that I know you've been waiting on, so let's get into it. Experience a unique tech tree that challenges the player to balance the constant trade-off between mobility and defence. Surprise opponents with your development choices and an open endgame configuration. That is the blurb taken from the Steam store for the British forces. This British bootcamp will be split into three videos, starting with Tier 1, then to Tier 2, and then Tier 3. To start with, let's get into it with Tier 1, also known as the HQ. First up, we have the infantry section, which costs 270 manpower and 7 population cap. These guys will be the backbone of your army. Next up is the Vickers Heavy Machine Gun Team, which costs 260 manpower and 6 population cap. Now onto the British Medic Squad, which costs 180 manpower and 3 population cap. And finally in Tier 1, we have the Universal Carrier, which costs 260 manpower and 3 population cap. Great harassing the enemy forces. Right, so here we have a British infantry section. This is what you will start with when you first play Brits. Not like the other factions where you normally start with the Engineer Squad, you will start with an Infantry Section. So, what does the Infantry Section do compared to all the other standard Infantry Squads in the game? So, unlike the Americans with their Riflemen, and unlike the Soviets with their Conscripts, the Infantry Section excels at long range rather than close range. Now, every squad in the game does better at close range than long range, but the best way to engage with these guys is to keep them at range when you have an engagement. The Infantry Section also has a passive ability, which is called the Cover Combat Bonus. Right now, you can see it is greyed out at the bottom. If I was to put my squad into light cover, this would then light up in a second. There we go. And now you can see that it's active. And now our squad has an increased rate of fire and survivability. Now, every squad has increased, um, increased survivability when in cover, but not an increased rate of fire, which is a, a unique thing for the British infantry sections, okay? And you can, know, you can tell the ability is also active by looking at the shield icon. You can see there's a little sword on the shield there um, in light cover and over here in green cover. Um, that signifies that that cover bonus is active. So the infantry section has two upgrades. It can upgrade with a pyrotechnic supplies for 40 missions, or it can upgrade with medical supplies for 30 missions. Over here, I have already upgraded two squads. Um, and the difference here, our first difference I want to show you between these guys is with this pyrotechnic upgrade ability, is that the, this squad can actually see a bit further than the this infantry section that has the medical upgrade. So I'll put this guy behind cover here. And you can see that we can see up uh, past the gate here. I'm going to swap these guys around, put this squad in a pretty much exactly the same position. And you'll see here now that we won't see past that gate, right? So you get a little bit extra vision when you have um, the pyrotechnic squad. So what does the pyrotechnic squad do? Um, it allows you to do coordinate fire for 45 munitions and also a smoke flare. Um, so to drop smoke for your, for, your, for your allies and yourself. It's worth noting, guys, you can only upgrade pyrotechnic supplies and the medical supplies once you've unlocked tier 2. You can also only upgrade the abilities here in friendly territory as indicated here. Once you have unlocked tier 2 you also gain access to a 25 pounder and also tier 3 also locks another 25 pounder over here. Now when you use pyrotechnics as I now show you like so one of your guys will lob a red smoke flare down, and this will be a signal to your artillery places in base to start firing. You can see this guy is about to fire, and this one also will fire, right? So I would advise using this ability on support weapons, machine guns, or if you want to try and get your opponent out of an area, this is the, uh, you know, the ideal thing to do. It's, it's quite cheap ability to actually um, bring down some decent um, artillery fire from your base. It's also worth noting, though, that if you, it'll still cost you 45 missions, even if you still haven't teched Tier 3. You'll only have one one of your, your 25 pounders firing until uh, until you have the tier 3 um, ticked up. But you can see that they, they, they fire quite a decent amount of, amount of shells and uh, and it's quite accurate as well. We dropped it there and it's a nice little spread there in the you know, circle around where we asked it to fire. Um, and again, here comes the, we'll do the smoke flare one next. So we'll just lob a smoke flare out like so. And that will drop down a green flare this time. And these houses won't do anything now. And it will just drop smoke wherever you want. It's quite a nice little quick way to drop down some cheap cheap smoke. And uh, for you to uh, advance through or stop a machine gun maybe suppressing you um, and the like. The um, These upgrades actually guys do not cancel out being able to pick up weapons. So all infantry sections can pick up two weapons uh, from their base. Which is um, either 50 munition piat or a 45 munition Bren gun. Now, to unlock them, you have to click on your HQ building, your tier 1, and you then click on research weapon racks here. That costs 150 manpower and 15 fuel. Extra firepower is now available. Now, once we've done that, we can then 
you'll now see that this is now active. We can actually pick these these up. And generally what you want to do, guys, is for your infantry sections is you want to give them the Bren Gun upgrade. So there goes one, one Bren Gun upgrade. And you can see it there. And the second one there. And now they have two. Okay. Now, this will increase their firepower against infantry. And uh, this is generally something that you want to do uh, as the game progresses and you've got munitions to spend. Now, the PX you generally want to put on your sappers, which we'll come to, um, we'll come to shortly. So, the great thing about British... British infantry sections that have um, medical supplies is that they can uh, heal other troops and not just not just themselves. So what we'll do is we'll activate medical supplies, and you can see here in a small all around itself it will heal. Okay, and uh, I could, don't need to stay at the bases. I could just keep moving. We'll move past. We'll move close to this MG as well. We'll also heal up this MG. So in this instance, blobbing. Only while healing is a good idea here because that allows all your squads nearby to heal up and then you can go and fight again. Then once you've finished up healing, then obviously spread your squads out because obviously if you're blo blobbing any engagements is bad because you're more likely to get lose more men when you blob. But in this instance, blobbing is okay just to heal up real quick and then move away. So now we've got our guys moving out on the field. Let's say we were to take a, an engagement on the battlefield, right? Let's say we had our first against, against the first stern pioneer and our, and our squad, you know, took some damage. But didn't drop any men. This is possible. You, this is an, this is possible that you, a possibility that you might have, where you get a four-man squad down to about like forty percent healthy, and they haven't dropped any men. Now, this would be a great. You don't have to retreat this squad, right? If, if there's no enemies nearby, you don't need to retreat. All you need to do with this squad is just to pull it back slightly, rotate in a healthy squad to keep keep them fighting, and then just have this squad press D, have them heal. This squad fights for a bit, and then once this squad's held up again, then you can rotate this squad back, back in. And that way, you can keep your field presence without having to fully retreat off the battlefield. And that is why I love playing bricks, because they have that field staying presence through the use of, uh, a good use of the medical field supplies here. So British Tommy sections can also lob grenades, standard milled bombs, for 25 munitions once you have upgraded it back at the Tier 1 HQ, which is here, for 100 manpower and 10 fuel. So once we've done that, And now we have access to log grenades. So just a standard normal grenade, which is good against clumped up in infantry, also good against people in buildings, and that will do some decent damage and hopefully maybe get you a wipe if you're lucky with enemies uh, clumped up. And again, that's 25 munitions for that. For the defensive structures that infantry sections can build, they can build trenches only in friendly territory. So you can see here, this is my base sector, so I can build a trench here, but in this neutral territory or enemy territory, I cannot place them. Basically, it's... um. Yeah, they provide green cover for your troops. We'll just get in it, like so. There you go, there's the green shield symbol. We've got green cover there. And we can defend and shoot 360 degrees uh, inside this with, with an infantry section. However, if we put a machine gun in it, it can only shoot out um, the front or the back. It can't shoot from the sides, as I'll show you in a minute once we get onto the machine gun. Um, they also can build sandbags, like so. So what I would urge you to do is whenever you're capturing a point like this, so you'd go to get yourself an infantry section, they would come along to this point, and you'd want to pray, press A and then W, and then you want to build the sandbag right next to the point like this. Now, why do you want to do that? If you put it right next to the point, your opponent can't really benefit from the, from the sandbags because that point actually blocks the sandbags on, the, on your opponent's side. So that way... Um, you can have your cover for yourself and kind of deny it for your opponent. I mean, they could go from the side here, but they're not really fully in cover, as you can see. And maybe two of the men actually stick out of that cover. So that's why I would always recommend trying to build... Whenever you're capturing a point, a new territory point, always, guys, build your cover if it's safe to do so. Obviously, if you're getting shot at, don't build it, because you take more damage when you're building stuff. But, um, you know, and obviously you're not giving out damage yourself either. So, um, yeah, that's a good idea. Always do that. Just a quick note, guys, about building sandbags on points. Um, if you're trying to build a sandbag on top of a fuel point, um, some fuel points, it can be a bit finicky. It sometimes doesn't want to let you build it right on top of it. It'll, it'll be, it'll be a bit finicky compared to other points. Uh, same thing with munitions points. It sometimes won't, won't want to let you build it right on top of the point like you like other points. However, the standard point, you have no problem. You have no problem building a sandbag right on top of it. And same thing with the VP. Um, they are actually one of the best points to put sandbags on because the sandbag actually is in a perfect little area, you know, covers the entirety of the VP point, so your opponents definitely can't benefit from the other side of the cover here, because as you can see, the sandbag takes up, uh, sorry, the VP takes up the entire side there. Uh, also, infantry sections can build um, the caches, the munitions caches, and the fuel caches, and again, as we went through another boot camps, the munitions cache uh, increases the yield from 5 munitions to 10, and the fuel from 3 to 6. 
There we go, like so. So here guys, I just wanted to show you guys how like, the infantry section in cover against the Stern Pioneer squad. You don't want to close the distance against them because that, you want to keep your distance against them. But as you can see here, if we keep our, our distance and utilize our range advantage, we can really quickly take down a Stern Pioneer squad, even from just light cover. You can see the Stern Pioneer squad is not doing hardly any damage against us here. So infantry section is absolutely excel at range. You know, we're not taking hardly any damage against that Stern Pioneer there. And even if that was a four-man squad, we would, we, we'd win that engagement from that distance. When you push up and try and grab this point, you put down the green cover like I was saying earlier. Like so, you put down the green cover. And then let's say we had another another Stern Pioneer squad coming at us. Here we go. This time they're going to just close the distance on us, right? And because we're already in behind green cover and stationary, we should be we should win this engagement quite easily. So see, the Stern Pioneer squad's probably going to drop at least one man before they get to us anyway. And then the second man of the four-man squad's going to die very quickly. And then it's, it's a four versus a two-man fight, but we should probably win that. Um, like so. Because we had the green cover there. Okay. There you go. Okay, so we're just repeating that engagement there, guys. And we can, and this time, you know, we haven't built cover. So this is the incorrect way of doing this. So we, we should always build cover or cap him. But here we'll have... See, so we're, not, we're not receiving that um, cover bonus here. The Stern Pioneer should do a lot better this time now. And, yeah. and it looks like the Stern Pioneers are going to win out. Just about in that engagement. There you go. So that's why cover is so important, guys. So remember, guys, it's the infantry sections that build the caches, not the engineer squad uh, for the British, which in this case is the sapper squad. So the Americans and the Soviets and the Austin all require their engineer squad to build the caches. But for the British, it's their core line infantry unit, which is the infantry section that does it. Before we move on to the machine gun, I just want to talk about one more um, feature that the infantry section and the sapper squad share. And that is the fact that they can bolster their squads by one. So this costs 150 manpower and 35 fuel, which is in the HQ tier 1 building. Once you unlock this, one extra soldier can be added to infantry squads now. and you can do this both to sapper squads and infantry sections. So you can see here now, I can then reinforce this squad up to 5 men, and so can I do with the sapper squad as well. And whenever you build a new infantry section, they start at 5 men, and sapper squads also they now start at 5 men. Okay? So guys, I would advise, before maybe buying your, your third or fourth infantry section, or maybe buying sapper squads, you probably want to be upgrading the Bolz infantry squads first. Because if you were to do it first, you wouldn't then have to be sp spend that extra manpower reinforcing your guys. Because you can see here, an infantry section at four man, well, we, we'll be having to spend 28 manpower. And if we, had, if we built two sapper squads as well, and then you've got a couple other infantry sections, that could maybe be around about 100 or maybe 200 manpower roughly, that you could have saved if you had researched bolster infantry squads a lot earlier on. And also, not only does, you know, having the fifth man increase the survivability, also increase their damage output uh, as well. And also for sapper squads, increase their repair speed. Right, so onto the machine gun, the Vickers machine gun, heavy machine gun. Costs you 260 manpower, and it has one of the biggest arcs of uh, fire for all the allied machine guns. I've lined up all the machine guns, pretty much all the machine guns here. And you can see you've got the American 50 cal. There's the firing arc. Here's the Maxim's firing arc. Here's the Vickers firing arc. You can see it's a lot bigger. And here's the MG34's arc, which is, I think, is the greatest in the game. But you get an idea here that the Vickers, even though it doesn't actually have any abilities... Uh, it does have um, a good firing arc compared to all the other allied machine guns, and um, it does have, I think, one of the best suppression um, of all the machine guns in the game. So here we go. You got the, your Vickers inside the trench here. You can shoot this way, and it can. If I can, I can turn it around to shoot the other way. However, I can't get it to face either the the right hand side or the left hand side of this trench. If I try and right click here, it'll go that way. It won't. It won't do anything. It'll only be. It'll only be the north or the south of the point, as you can see. But I can't do the side. So it's very easy to flank. Um, these machine guns, once they're inside a trench, unlike if they were in a house, it was easy, you know, a house you can easily face all different, different directions, but these trenches, you already can go these two directions, okay? So you can easily come around and flank this Vickers. Let's go talk about the Medic Squad. Now, the Medic Squad is one of the cheapest squads in the game at 180 manpower. I think 20 manpower cheaper than an Ostrupen Squad. Now, what they can do is, obviously, they heal, believe it or not, uh, um, and they act pretty much the same as a ambulance crew from the Americans. However, they also have the same ability called 
distribute medical supplies. So if I had some infantry sections here that were wounded. So I've just made some low health squads here. So this medic squad could just manually heal each one individually like this. They'll just go up and heal one, one squad at a time. Like so. They've gone up and healed this squad. But I could also activate distribute medical supplies and that will heal everybody in an area around the medic squad. Okay. Now generally guys, I haven't really used the medic, don't really use the medic squad in my build. Why? Because I, your infantry sections with the medical support line upgrade just do it themselves. So the only real reason you might want to get a medic squad is, um, you know, maybe have a squad at, at base to heal up your dudes if you, if you're, you know, you're not good at constantly keeping up with your with the micro and, and, and hitting the, the the D button for um, healing up your squads, or to have another early unit for capping because this squad can cap territory, but. It is a medic squad. It has really bad combat, you know, effectiveness. I would not use this in a, you know, in a combat role. You, you know, you only want to do it for capping or healing squads at the base. At the base. So there, there you go. That's the uh, the medical thing. And uh, I can also pop on avoid automatic healing. So this will stop the squad from always running around the map and being a nuisance of itself. So I could then, uh, then you can have them. So this will, this will actually lock them down in, in into position actually. So then I would then lower the HP of these guys again. And then pop this on. So I can still like, you can act it as like maybe an ambulance almost. You can't reinforce off the medic, but at least you can still heal, which is kind of nice. So there you guys go. That's the medic pretty much. Right, on to the next unit, which is the light little, the first little vehicle you get for the British forces. And that is the Universal Carrier. Now here we have the Universal Carrier in its three forms. This is when you build it for 260 manpower. It doesn't cost any fuel, interestingly enough. And uh, when it's like this, you can actually put a squad inside it. You can put one squad inside the vehicle. Car put support weapons, only core infantry. Now, the infantry, when they're inside the vehicle, they cannot fire. However, what they can do is cap territory. Like so. And then I can, you know, and it's just maybe a quick way to get your squads to the front line. You can vary your squads around around the map. Now, the UC um, can upgrade uh, 60 missions to the Vickers K-mount. Or 75 missions for the Wasp Flamethrower variant. Now, it can, and it also can only upgrade those while in friendly territory. As you can see here, we're in neutral territory right now. We cannot upgrade these two abilities. Now, let's come back to the... These are the this is something I already had made, as you can see here. We have the Flamethrower Wasp and the Universal Carrier. Now, why would you choose... Why, when would you choose between the two? Right, so the Vickers K is good for open maps with not much, too, with not much green cover on. Because um, what you want to do with this bad boy... Is you want to be kiting against enemy forces, and when they're trying to push you, imagine there's an enemy coming this way, and then you just keep kiting back, and your Vickers K will start shooting. And also, you remember, you've also got a little tiny machine on the front, so you've got two little weapons firing there, not just the Vickers K now on the back. So your damage has increased. It also has the ability for suppressing fire. For only 10 munitions, you can suppress the enemy forces that are coming at you. So if an enemy's blobbing up, um, you know, you can just pull back, you activate it, and then you've got a clear symbol above your head, and it lasts, I believe, for 30 seconds. And you can suppress enemy enemy units coming in, and it's just a good way to you know have a mobile suppression platform. Uh, but it is very vulnerable to things like pack guns. A two 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 will absolutely cream it, um, and things like that. Okay. Now the UC, once um, they get damaged slightly, selection, health, uh, it can heal itself. However, it, it can't have the ability suppressing fire active upon upon doing so. So then we activate crew repair. Now crew repair, when it's not veteran. Um, means it has to stay still. It, ca it can't move while it while it's um, while it's repairing. However, uh, let me just show you guys now. And then activate repair. I can move while still bit while repairing, which is very nice. And move fairly fairly quickly. I might add as well. So it's quite it's worth it to try and keep a UC alive into the late game if you can do. Now, so the this was so this one you basically want to use against maybe clumps of infantry to suppress them. Avoid obviously Shrek blobs that kind of thing. You don't want that will die straight away to a Shrek blob. But against infantry that you know that like Volks or something or, or grenadiers that haven't got any you know um, easy way to take you out other than Panzerfaust. As long as you keep your distance, you should be on a really easy time with the universal carrier. Obviously, this thing will die to two Panzerfausts or one Panzerfaust and then some small arms fire will kill it. Now the flamethrower variant, the wasp. Is, is also good against um, blobs, but very, very good against using in cover. So like green cover positions, like behind these walls here, or maybe in these bunkers, the wasp or houses in the, in the, in the top side of this map, uh, this map is called Across the Rhine for those who want to know, uh, is very effective. It's good, you know, very good against machine guns and things like that that can't move very quickly. So that's why you want to, want to, want to have a wasp. And also the wasp can shoot, you can use attack ground, so it can also 
fire its flames over, like, hillsides like this, or through sh um, sight blockers and things and hedgerows, which is very handy, unlike the Vickers K. The Vickers K cannot, like, attack ground like this can, so this is quite handy um, to shoot through things. Imagine, like, if you're playing on Red Bull Express, and you go, you've got the two hedgerows along there, Using the flame throw wasp to burn through, maybe from the center of the map to the, to the to the flanks, could be quite effective at maybe displacing enemy machine guns and things to help your allies out, for instance. Okay. So, guys, I'll just show you guys uh, how to use the UC against the blob here. So, you come up against it, you'd activate the suppression as soon as you had the access to do so. It's also worth noting the UC actually does more damage the further it is from from your opponent. So, you can hit, you can see here now we activate the suppression. We're, we're suppressing him, and obviously, you know, units are suppressed that won't don't do much damage at all. But you can see we're suppressing the enemy blob here, and obviously you would be having your infantry section engaging as well to assist you in this, so you could you could um, have a have a good engagement. And that way, you know, we've done a couple of manpower hits there, and we can come back, pop on the the, the repairs, it repairs quite quickly again, especially three, so we can repair on the move, and maybe have a sapper squad here repairing up as well, uh, like so. And then here, we, um, over in the north, we have a machine gun here, and I'll show you how effective the flamethrower here is against the machine gun. So, here, you know, if you find yourself a machine gun like this. You want to shoot it. Ideally, what you'd rather want to do, rather than getting in the fire arc of the machine gun, is probably want to come down to about here, and then attack the machine gun, or rather just attack ground here, and you can launch the flames up the up the uh, the hill, and you can see here that we're burning this MG, uh, and it's dying quite quickly in the flames. However, it's also, guys, worth noting that once the MG gets veteran C1 for the the Axis MGs, they can activate incendiary rounds, so. You'll want to watch out for that because they will at that incendiary a very short burst will kill you. So you need to be very quick on the ball to wait in noticing that. So whenever you see an MG about to do a full reload, even like midway through a mach machine gun round burst, that makes you think, okay, they've activated the armor piercing, the um, the incendiary rounds, right? That's when you need to know to back off as fast as you can. Otherwise, you're going to lose the UC incredibly quickly. And that goes the same for all light vehicles. If, whenever you see an MG, an Axis MG do that. And there you guys have it. That is the first part in a series of three videos for the British forces for their boot camp. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do consider subscribing to the Twitch channel and also my YouTube channel. Would really appreciate the support there, guys. I do try and stream nearly every single day on Twitch, twitch.tv slash helpinghands. And thanks for watching. Catch you later. Bye-bye.